assalamu alaikum viewers this is the part 2 of the lecture series about crystal field theory and this is the updated and summarized version of this topic and in this particular lecture we will discuss the crystal field splitting for octahedral and tetrahedral geometries and mainly their comparison and if you uh, understand this lecture please do like subscribe and share this channel in the previous lecture we have discussed the analogy in which we have considered that this is a sponge ball and the ligands are attracted towards this sponge ball and uh, put a pressure on it as a result of which this sponge ball d shapes and uh, two regions are formed one region is of high energy and other is region of low energy similar is the case with the metal ions and ligands that uh, when ligands approach then the d orbital of the metal splits into high energy and low energy levels so uh, next we have seen various shapes of the d orbital so as we have seen dxy dyz and dx e orbitals which are in between the axis orbitals and dx square y square and dz square these are the on the axis orbitals and in the last diagram we have seen only the octahedral geometry but in today's lecture we shall see the comparison and introduction of some more terms that we will be using in the next lectures so if you uh, follow this diagram here is the energy parameter like if we are going from uh, low to up then energy of the system is increasing so these are the 5d orbitals dxy dyz dxc dx square y square and dz square here these are the orbitals of the central metal atom or ion as the ligands are approaching towards the central metal atom or ion all these orbitals they feel uh, electrostatic repulsion between the electrons of the ligand and between the electrons of metal as a result of which all these go high in energy so one thing important is that although all are going high in energy but still their degeneracy is not lost at this stage the reason is that uh, at this stage still no bond has been formed between the metal and ligand just ligands have come closer to the metal line due to the electrostatic attraction of metal so at this stage still the degeneracy has not been lost now at this stage now if we see here that when ligands are approaching towards metal and they finally made a bond then if the geometry of this uh, overall structure is octahedral then the separating will be in this manner which has been described here so it means one other important thing uh, is important here that this splitting pattern depends on the shape of the complex if the octahedral geometry then shape is this if there is tetrahedral or square planar geometry then splitting pattern will be different so now we see how the octahedral geometry causes uh, the separating pattern in this way so if we say here that on the axis orbitals which is dx square y square and dz square they feel more repulsion once again the repulsion between the electrons of metal and between the electrons of ligands so they feel more repulsion and they go from this to this stage uh, and they become high in energy whereas in between the axis orbital which are dxy dyz and dxc orbitals they become low in energy from the initial level and uh, uh, in this way they lies here so in this way this degeneracy has been lost at this stage and the overall gap between the lowest energy uh, energy of the orbital and the highest energy of the orbital this energy gap is called as del o and what is del o so del o is actually the octahedral crystal field splitting parameter similarly if the shape is tetrahedral then splitting pattern will be different and uh, so this parameter will also change there now question is this why the on the axis orbitals uh, have gone high in energy whereas in between the axis orbitals have come low in energy so what is the octahedral geometry so if we see here this is the octahedral geometry and uh, six ligands are approaching towards the metal so this is the x-axis this is the y-axis and this is the z-axis so if we see here that all the ligands are coming through the axis along the axis as a result of which those orbitals which are 
along the axis they will feel more repulsion as they are coming directly in the path of the incoming ligands so they feel more repulsion what is the repulsion between the metal electrons and between the ligand electrons so they will feel more repulsion and they go from the normal energy state to high energy state by a factor of 0.6 del o similarly the in between the axis orbitals they go low in energy why because they are lying in between the axis like these places so they are not coming directly into the path of the incoming ligands so they feel less repulsion they go low in energy and they go low in energy by a factor of 0.4 del o again del o is crystal field separating parameter for octahedral geometry uh, now next uh, terms are that dx square y square and dz square orbitals are also called as equally degenerated orbitals and uh, in the books it has been represented by eg whereas dx y dy z and dx e orbitals are called as triply degenerate orbitals and these are mostly represented by t to g here one thing important is that eg is not the abbreviation of equally degenerated orbitals similarly t to g is not the abbreviation of uh, triply degenerate orbitals actually eg and t to g are group theoretical terms these terms have been derived depending upon the symmetry elements present in these orbitals as these orbitals have different shapes so according to that shape we are using group theory and according to group theory and um, according to um, the group theory the shapes of these orbitals are corresponding to a particular number which we achieve here in this case is eg and here in this case is t2g for example this g represents uh, a factor or a parameter which is called as inversion like if we see in this octahedral geometry that uh, if we invert this complex upside down uh, then the there lies a symmetry in this complex so it means center of inversion is present here and in those com complexes where center of inversion is present then we represent g by that symmetry element so in this way in both these sets of octahedral geometry we will write here g g means gerade which means a center of inversion so it is a different thing it has nothing to do with the we have just uh, donated the eg and t2g for these orbitals uh, so this is all about the octahedral crystal field separating and its parameter which is represented by del o now let's see the diagram for tetrahedral geometry again here if you see there that when four ligands are attached and geometry is tetrahedral then splitting pattern will be different and uh, here we see that it is inverted as compared to the octahedral geometry so in this case the in between the axis orbitals they feel more repulsion and they go high in energy and from this to this level whereas the on the axis orbitals which are dx square y square and dz square they feel less repulsion and they go low in energy by 0.6 del t whereas the in between the axis orbitals go from this to this upper level by a factor of 0.4 del t now what is del t again just like del o del t will be the tetrahedral crystal field separating parameter now it means uh, as we have discussed that geometry affects this splitting pattern uh, now question is this why in between the axis orbitals go high in energy whereas on the axis orbitals go low in energy so here we see the tetrahedral geometry in 3d so uh, this is the x-axis this is the y-axis and this is the z-axis where all the these ligands are coming actually in uh, tetrahedral geometry in between the axis so as the path of the ligand in tetrahedral geometry has been changed now ligands are coming in between the axis so in the in between the axis orbitals will go high in energy like dxy dyz and dxc whereas uh, the on the axis orbitals uh, which are dx square y square and dz square they are not coming directly in the path of the ligand so they will feel less repulsion so two differences are there between the octahedral and tetrahedral geometry one is the this pattern has been inverted and uh, the second notable factor is that del t is smaller like this splitting is smaller as compared to the 
splitting of the octahedral geometry so del o is greater as compared to del t and uh, if we see what is the uh, approximate comparison between these two factors so if we see here okay, del o is equal to if 1 then del t will be equal to 0.45 of del o and if we round off this 2.5 which is half so it means del t splitting or tetrahedral splitting parameter is almost half as compared to the octahedral splitting parameter so uh, in this way uh, we represent or compare the uh, tetrahedral geometry splitting pattern and the octahedral geometry splitting parameter uh, another important thing is here uh, in case of representation of the orbitals here the equally degenerated orbitals are just represented by e in this case whereas the uh, triply degenerated orbitals are in this case represented by t2 so in tetrahedral geometry this g which was gerade or which was center of inversion uh, we will not write its reason is that uh, if you see here uh, in tetrahedral geometry as we try to invert this so the reason is that if we invert this then there is no center of inversion and the, if we invert this then the symmetry so if center of inversion is absent then g is absent, absent so we will not write g in case of tetrahedral crystal field separating diagram so this was the basic comparison between the uh, octahedral crystal field splitting and tetrahedral field splitting uh, so this was all about today's lecture if you have any question let me know in the comments i will respond as soon as possible okay thank you allah hafiz